First of all, thank you very much to accept the interview of Gasco.com. Thank you for inviting us today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, we uh, want to in invite you to briefly introduce the service and the products of GE Pl Pl Plas Plastics Automotive Division. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, GE Plastics is a manufacturing uh, of resins. Mm -hmm. uh, so plastic materials, that's a raw material that other people use to make very nice products, mm -hmm. like car parts, but also mobile phones, computers. It's, it's mm -hmm. used in a wide variety of markets. Mm -hmm. Um, the automotive division focuses purely on the automotive market. Mm -hmm. We work very closely with our customers to basically uh, give them solutions, material mm -hmm. solutions to the problems that they face, like lightweight solutions, mm -hmm. like um, materials that can help them to meet safety requirements or materials that are environmentally progressive mm -hmm. to give them good solutions to the uh, harsh environmental requirements that are out there. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, can you also in, introduce, uh, especially the Chinese, uh, Chinese people, you know, the end users, what's the advantage when we put the plastics on automobiles? Um, sure, I think one of the key advantages of, of plastic materials is that it's, uh, it gives weight out versus traditional materials like glass and, mm -hmm. uh, and steel. Mm -hmm. Typically, our materials can give up a weight reduction 30 to 50 percent. Uh -huh. um, if you would see, we, we will be um, showcasing, or our partners will be showcasing two special vehicles at the Shanghai Auto Show. Mm -hmm. um, one will be the, uh, the GM Chevrolet Gold uh -huh. vehicle, mm -hmm. the other one will be the Hyundai Carmac um, mm -hmm. Advanced Technology Demonstration Vehicle. Mm -hmm. On those cars, for example, we have taken out 60 to 90 kilograms of weight mm -hmm. versus tr traditional materials like glass and, and steel. Okay. Um, a second very important thing is that there is a um, um, a huge drive in the industry to go to more enver environmentally green products because mm -hmm. the automaker are looking what the impact is they have on on the environment mm -hmm. and we have uh, materials that don't contain any any hazardous substances we have materials that um, that can be recycled so those are very important items then safety there is also a huge safety. drive to increase safety as well for occupants so people inside of the car as well as people pedestrians who walk the street mm -hmm. and who are impacted by a traffic accident mm -hmm. um, globally there's a huge drive to implement legislation and we have solutions mm -hmm. so a combination of material and a design solution mm -hmm. to um, to help meet those requirements globally mm -hmm. and also in in china mm -hmm. And then design. I think in the end we're all car buyers. You, me, one day we buy a car <laughs> yeah. and that car should look nice. And I think the opportunities that we yeah. can give with plastic materials mm -hmm. to give it much nicer shapes mm -hmm. and, and design freedom for designers, colors, shape, mm -hmm. that's enabled by plastic materials. Okay. So, uh, generally speaking, for, for GE's part, plas uh, plastic division, uh, how much percentage on the automotive industry, I mean application? I think first for GE Plastics, mm -hmm. um, automotive is a very important segment and we have more than 20% of our revenue are generated in automotive. 24. More than, more than 20% of 20 our re revenues are generated in automotive. Okay. Uh, then how uh, how's in the China market? In the China market also automotive is a very important market segment mm -hmm. for us. Um, I think revenue-wise, we're slightly lower than the number I mentioned before, mm -hmm. as this is uh, a market which has been predominantly very much of electronics, mm -hmm. but it's very fastly catching up and uh, getting close to the global average. Okay. Uh, considering the automotive, you know, supply chain, uh, for GE part, you you work, you served as a tier one supplier, directly contact with the OEMs like Hyundai or you just uh, uh, like the, how to say, the tier two suppliers, contact with the tier one suppliers, what's your role? Yeah, I, th I think in this case, it's, it's um, we need to explain it a little bit better. Um, mm -hmm. Because actually what our product is granules, right? We have mm -hmm. plastic raw materials mm -hmm. that sometimes we supply directly to the OEM, mm -hmm. sometimes we supply to the tier one, sometimes we supply to the tier two. So actually, in, from a supply chain perspective, we work with the OEM, mm -hmm. with the tier one, as well as with the tier two. Okay. Um, our activities might be slightly different depending on who you're working to. So um, we work very closely with the molders or the tier twos and the tier threes mm -hmm. to give them support on how to mold the product, how to work with our materials to make sure that they get the optimum effect of using our materials. With the OEMs on the other side, we work very much looking at future vehicles, what are the trends, what kind mm -hmm. of material solutions are you looking for, mm -hmm. in that case more involved in the development phase mm -hmm. uh, and, and coming up with new material solutions and new products. Mm -hmm. Also with some of the tiers, we work in the same way. Uh, mm -hmm. We serve them well on the production side, but also on the development side. And 
I think this is also something which makes us different from a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. um, we look at materials, the way you, you process materials, and how you design yes. as, as a one unit. Mm -hmm. And we spend a lot of time, effort, and money to mm -hmm. make sure that we give the best solution to our customers. So mm -hmm. we invest in understanding, processing, and supporting our customers. We invest in design and engineering and helping our customers. Even though we don't make parts, but we want to make sure that the customers who make the parts mm -hmm. are really very successful in what they do. So you always put the customer's requirements as a first, uh, as a priority. Customer priorities is number one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so what's the difference between, you know, when you contact with OEMs and contact with the tier one suppliers, what's the difference? It depends a little bit on the specific situation. And in, what you see in the industry that sometimes the, let's say the design and engineering is done by the OEMs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, for example, an instrument panel can be designed by an OEM. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can also be designed by a tier. It just mm -hmm. depends on the OEM you're working with, so that is different, different depending on the parts. So also our activities depend on what the tier or the OEM does. Mm -hmm.